Well, hey folks, I'm Josh. Welcome back to the shop. Today, uh, I'm going to show you how you take a fairly typical Swiss Army knife and get the small blade into a nice condition for whittling. A uh, Swiss Army knife is one of my favorite uh, knives to whittle with, and that's partially just because I almost always have one with me. It's really rare for me to not carry a Swiss Army knife of some variety. And the, the blade that we're going to be working with here is the small blade on the Swiss Army knives. So if you pick up a typical standard Swiss Army knife, like for say uh, this, this is a Tinker, uh, you'll have the large blade and you have the small blade. And the small blade is actually really good uh, size, in my opinion, for whittling. But it needs a little bit of modification. So, um, before you get going, you want to consider which knife you want to do this to. If you don't own a Swiss Army knife, then put some thought into this. Um, if you do own a Swiss Army knife, any one of the 91 millimeter models well, almost all of the 91 millimeter models have a small blade on them that you could do this with. But even then, you still probably want to think about it because some are better than others for this kind of situation. For example, the knife that I'm going to be doing this to today is a Super Tinker. So here's a Victorian X Super Tinker. Super Tinker. And it's a Super Tinker because it has scissors um, along with the typical opener layer. And then the two blades, it's obviously been used a little. And then the tools on the back. You have the Phillips, the hook, which is fun, and the awl. So I think this is gonna be the one that I use because this is one of my most frequently carried knives. I like to have the scissors on me and it's a good size to hold. Uh, it's got three layers. Three layers is a pretty good size in my hand, and I don't want to go any bigger because I don't like to carry anything bigger than three layers in my pocket. Um, and a four layer starts to get awkward for longer type carving sessions. So uh, another really good option would be a tinker. Uh, this is just the tinker. What the difference is, no scissors in this guy. If you don't need scissors, this is a great size to pick up, and it's relatively inexpensive and abundant. You can pick them up lots of places. If you think you need a saw, I recommend stepping up to the Field Master. Um, the Field Master still has the scissors, just like the Super Tinker, but it adds a saw and you get up to four layers, which starts to get a little big to carry around in your pocket. Some people don't mind. So that's, that's the one I recommend going with if you want to. The reason you don't want to use one of the ones like, so this is an Explorer. The Explorer is fun because it has the inline Phillips, which is awesome, but it has this magnifying glass, which is, I don't know, I don't ever really ever use that. But it also has a corkscrew, which corkscrews, some people would argue, are a much better tool than that Phillips that it replaces. But if you're whittling or carving with the knife, that corkscrew just hits you in the worst spots, in my opinion. It really creates hot spots and is uncomfortable for any length of time. So I don't recommend any of the models that have a corkscrew. Um, like this is a camp, which is a great combination of tools, but that corkscrew is just not handy to hold uh, in your hand. So, but it does come with, you know, the blades and it has a saw and the openers, but I, you know, I recommend looking for one that doesn't have a corkscrew. So this is, uh, this is a deluxe tinker that has the pliers along with the scissors. Um, probably not the best option, but like I said, I think the sweet spot for this is somewhere between, uh, if you want two layers, the tinker, if you want three layers, a super tinker, and if you're comfortable with four layers, then the field master is the one I would go with because then you add the saw and it gets pretty handy. I would stay away from something like the Swiss Champ because there is like no way in the world that this is comfortable to hold for very long at all. It has a lot of really nice handy useful tools to have around like throw in your backpack kind of thing, but I would not choose this knife uh, for the type of knife that I would want to have in my pocket and have a nice whittling blade on. Um, so the knife of choice here for me is going to be the Super Tinker. We'll get these other ones out of the way. And I'll show you what we'll do 
First thing you want to do is you want to take off whatever keychain bobbly stuff you have on there. So when you buy a Swiss Army knife, they almost always come with this key ring. I don't really like that key ring. I find it really hard to take on and off. Um, so what I do instead is I use this is a uh, these are called power clips, and uh, I'll include the link for that. I think they're fantastic. Uh, you can use like if you have a pocket clip that you like to use, but you, and you have a bunch of knives like I do, and you don't want to buy a ton of um, clips you just buy some power clips and they're really easy to switch on and off which if you're going to use the knife for whittling you want one that you can take that off of because that gets in the way while you're using it so um, anyway I will include that in the links down below um, but yeah power clips they're intended for fishing for fishing uh, switching out fishing baits and things like that but uh, I think they work really well for this so anyway Take off the key ring, whatever you have there, and then you want to look at your small blade. And what we're looking for, so this knife that I've futzed with quite a bit, has a very nice shape to it for whittling, in my opinion. So what we're going for is a straight edge. Now to create that straight edge, we're going to need some tools. And I highly recommend that you use a grinder of some type here. If you have a bench grinder, um, or a, a whetstone that, like a powered, watered whetstone, like a Tormek, or something like that. That's going to speed this up a ton. You could do this on a set of stones by hand, but it's going to take quite a while. Unless you have like a super aggressive diamond stone or something like that, um, you could do it with sandpaper on like a piece of granite if you were feeling super aggressive. But it. It's going to take quite a while. So what I really recommend is you need to have a grinder. If you have a bench grinder or some form of powered sharpening system, that's going to be the way you want to go. Um, if you don't have a bench grinder, find a buddy that has a bench grinder because it's going to speed this up big time. What we want to do first of all is mark out the shape we're going for on the knife. So like I said, this is a perfectly straight line that just starts back here and goes to the tip. To get that shape, all we got to do get ourselves a straight edge and a marker that you throw on the floor. And you just want to give yourself a line that starts right here, right where the blade actually is sharpened at and goes to the tip. So basically you're going to take off all this rounded part. You don't you don't want that. You don't want a rounded shape. At least I don't want a rounded shape when I whittle. I think a straight edge is much better to work with. So we just line it up and give ourselves a line. The reason you want to give yourself a line is that once you get grinding, it's easy to take off too much. And you want to leave as much metal here as you can because you want to be able to sharpen it a few times. So there you can see my line. It goes from the very tip and back. The first tool we're going to need here is a bench grinder. This is my bench grinder, at least one of them, and this is a really good choice for this because it's going to go pretty quick, but this is a low speed grinder. These are made by Rikon, obviously, and there's other companies out there that make low speed or sometimes called a half speed bench grinder because they turn it half the RPMs of a typical bench grinder. Most bench grinders grind upwards of 3,400 RPMs. This one does 1,750 RPMs. So it's about half the speed and this particular grinder has white wheels on it and these white wheels what's the word, slough off more quickly, so they don't heat up as much, which we gotta be very careful. We don't wanna heat up the steel on our knife too much because it will ruin the temper. It'll make the steel too soft. So we gotta make sure we don't overheat our steel. If you have a normal bench grinder, you can totally do this on a normal bench grinder. You just have to go slower and dip your blade in water more frequently so that you don't overheat your blade. So. I'm gonna do it on this one because it's what I have and it works great. So I'm gonna use this aggressive wheel over here. It's a 60 grit and I'm gonna grind that nice flat line into it. I'm gonna actually turn the grinder and make it comfortable for me to use and I'll film, you'll be kind of at an angle and you should be able to see it pretty well. All right, here we go grinding. Turn it on, my water here for dipping as I go. I'm just gonna grind a little, dip, grind, dip, grind, dip because we don't wanna overheat that steel. If it starts getting too hot to touch, it's too hot and you need to let it cool down. So if you keep a little bit of water on the blade, if that water is evaporating off almost instantly, your blade is too hot. That's a good way to know 
how quick you need to go or how quick you can go. Stop every now and then and dip your blade. The place you have to be the most careful is right on the tip. You have very little metal up there and it's really easy to overheat at the tip of the blade. So be very careful when you're grinding at that part. Real light pressure. So I'm basically there. Um, I'm actually going to bevel each side just a little bit right now to save myself some time on the grinding on the uh, sharpening stones. So I'm just going to put a little bit of a bevel on each side of the blade. Now the only other thing you might want to do is you might, if you compare these two, you may want to take just a little bit of metal off this top edge up here. That's up to you. Um, I like to do it because it helps me get my blade into the small corners a little bit, but it's optional really. You don't have to do that. You don't want to go too far because you will weaken your blade. And I'm not going to actually do as much on this one as I did on that last one. done with the grinder. Now something to think about when you're using the grinder, make sure that you aren't applying pressure in a way that this is going to somehow close up on your fingers, in particular if you're grinding that back edge. Um, Swiss Army knives don't have locks typically, so you want to be careful about this folding up, um, which means putting pressure back here, you have to be very gentle or make sure you're using the blade uh, to hold on to rather than holding the handle and then it could close up on your fingers. So uh, think about that as you're grinding. Not such a big deal when you're grinding this edge, but if you're grinding the tip at all, uh, don't let that blade close up on your fingers. We have all the initial shaping done on the grinder and now it's time to go and do the sharpening end of things. And you could go about doing this with just about whatever means you have. Um, my preferred method for sharpening my knives, knives is using, uh, these are DMT diamond sharpening stones or uh, plates or whatever you want to call them. I have a series of plates that go from extra coarse to extra fine and I will just slowly step up through those stones. Um, these are pricey. Not everyone has these. You could do this stage with whatever you normally use to sharpen your knives. Now it's time to put an edge on it. So you want an edge all together bevel of somewhere between 20 and 25 degrees on your blade. I tend to shoot closer to 25 because uh, this is a little bit softer metal. This is a stainless steel. It's not super hard. So keeping a little bit steeper bevel on it means it's not as easy to cut with, but it means your edge will last and hold up a little bit better. On my whittling knives, I prefer what's called a convex bevel. So what that means is if you look down at the knife like this and you were to zoom in really really close the blade has kind of this shape to it. At the tip it kind of rounds out right here and it's convex. As opposed to the way it comes from the factory and most blades come from the factory with a micro bevel. Um, convex edges are a little bit stronger. I like the way they cut better and I actually made a whole video comparing the two and I really conclusively came out saying convex is the way to go for a whittling knife. We're going to convex the edge on this one a little bit as we move up through the stones and put a nice sharp razor edge on it and we will of course finish up on a leather strop and I'll not show you the full thing I'll just kind of give you the quick highlights as I change stones and I'll show you maybe if I can the little wire burr that will raise up on the edge as I pass through the stones. So this is my extra coarse stone or uh, plate if you prefer and I like to use a little bit of water and I really won't need to do much on this stone. Uh, the, the knife is close to the appropriate edges because I did a little bit of grinding and uh, just a couple passes is all I'm really going to need here. So next up is the coarse plate and make sure you put the diamonds up. 
Now if you want a more detailed way of how I get a knife ready to whittle, I made a whole video of it. I'll make sure to include that link. I'll include the link also to the uh, uh, comparison video of a convex bevel versus a, a micro bevel. And uh, so I'll put both of those links uh, at the end here. Moving up to the fine grit stone. Last but not least, the extra fine diamond stone. All right, so this is after the extra fine diamond stone. And if you look, right at the edge of the blade, there's light reflecting right there. That's actually that really fine little wire burr right at the edge there. We want to remove that, but that means that I have an edge all the way along the full length of that because there's a burr the full length right there. So now we're ready for the strop. So here's my strop. Nothing fancy. It's just a piece of oak with a bit of thrift store leather jacket, leather glued to it uh, with some polishing compound. All right, so I think it's safe to say we're done with the strop. And you can tell because that edge no longer has that burr on it and it's nice and polished doesn't catch the light like it did on the tip anymore. Now I could keep going and polish it even more, but at some point I think you hit diminishing returns. But the edge is nice and sharp now. Uh, the only thing I didn't do uh, is I didn't, remember I, if you remember I ground the back of the blade a little bit, this right here. I should probably touch that up on the stone so it's polished the same so I'll go do that quick off camera all right here she is back ends all polished up feels good to the touch and the edge is as sharp as sharp can be you can tell no burrs on that edge anymore nice and mirror polished with a good convex roll to it so Let's give it a test run. I know folks love to do the paper test, so here we go. Let's see how she does. Slices right through. No trouble at all. Okay. I don't know how much that really tells us as far as testing of a blade goes, but uh, what does tell us things is how it cuts in wood. So I got a couple pieces of stuff we can putz around with here. This is a bit of basswood and slices right through. Shaves end grain just fine. Let's see about a stop cut there. Does good. All right, or does well. Now here's some pine. Does just fine in that. Nice clean shavings. Does well. Let's try something harder. All right, so here's a piece of cherry just to see how she works in a, in a bit of harder wood. a fine shaving. Well, there you have it. That's how you turn the small blade of a Swiss Army knife into a good whittling knife. Now, is this knife that we just sharpened up here, gonna replace something like 
uh, one of the big Mora knives or a dedicated detail knife like this kind of thing? No, not, not really. I mean, if you're sitting at your bench and you have access to a knife like this, this is probably not what you're gonna grab. But if you're out at the park with the kids or you're hanging out with, you know, somewhere, you're waiting, there's a branch nearby or you happen to throw a little piece of wood in your pocket, this is great, you know, the best whittling knife is of course just like the best camera, it's whatever you have with you. So if you're in a place, you're not as likely to carry something like this or this around, but I always have a Swiss Army knife in my pocket, and now I always have a Swiss Army knife with a whittling blade on it, and uh, that's pretty darn handy. And it's also handy in a lot of other ways, I have all kinds of useful tools here, but uh, now I can whittle when I'm on the go. One other thing I should mention is some people when whittling really don't like this key ring. And so if it's in your way while you're whittling, which it could be, you know, depending on your grips and your style, that might really be an issue for you. But for me, it is occasionally in the way, but it's not enough in the way to get rid of having the ability to put the knife on a clip and carry it in uh, on a suspension clip in my pocket. So. Um, I'm not going for the most comfortable knife I can carry. I'm going for the most utilitarian knife that has a whittling blade and is still easy to carry and will make me likely to carry it. Um, so I, I don't take those off, but it wouldn't be hard to do. You could do it with a Dremel tool or a grinder or, you know, there's lots of ways you could take that little, little nub off of there. Um, you should also probably be noted that if you do this to your knife, you very likely are voiding the warranty, and Swiss Army knives come with a lifetime warranty. Uh, so if you do this, you know, you're doing it at your own risk, and uh, you're probably voiding the warranty. But that said, I mean, you know, it, it's not such an expensive knife that it's prohibitive in that sense. Uh, it's also kind of nice because you wouldn't have to worry about losing this knife as much as you might have to worry about losing a Great Eastern Cutlery pocket carver like this guy. You know, this is 20, 30 bucks, depending on which knife you go with. This is easily 100. Uh, so this is a much bigger loss. And um, so I don't tend to carry this around with me in my pocket at all times, but I don't have any trouble throwing a Swiss Army knife in my pocket. You know, another nice trade-off with the uh, Swiss Army steel here is, you know, being stainless steel, this is a really low maintenance steel. You don't really have to worry about rusting. Uh, you can carry it around in your pocket and your sweat or grime and dirty hands or water or whatever it can get on these blades and you know, they really hold up to that really well. As opposed to a knife like this that's made out of 1095 high carbon steel, uh, this will rust, this will pit, this will get tarnish. So carrying this around in your pocket, you have to be more careful with that steel. So it's nice to have potentially a knife like this that you can have for on the go that you don't have to worry about the steel as much. And yes, it's a little bit softer because it's a more stainless steel. A pretty useful little knife to have, and I have seen lots of people use just a Swiss Army knife to make some really nice carvings. So, uh, thanks for watching. I hope this was useful. Um, if it was, like, subscribe, leave a comment, all that stuff, it helps me out. So thanks a bunch for watching. Have a good one.